In this rectangular waveguide example, we will learn how to build a simple rectangular dielectric filled waveguide using XFDTD solid modeling techniques. We will learn to use the built in material libraries within XFDTD. We will learn how to create a waveguide interface to transmit and receive energy in our geometry. We will solve for and display the two lowest order TE modes of the waveguide, and we will use and display the field results from the solid part sensor. To get started, First, we'll set up the project parameters by going into the project properties and clicking on the display units tab. Here, we'll change the default length units from millimeters to centimeters. Then, we'll click on the frequency range of interest tab. Setting the frequency range of interest is an important project property. By default, the range of interest is set by the maximum allowed by the FDTD grid. Our K band waveguide corresponds to the dimensions of a WR42 which has a field distributions corresponding to a single frequency of operation which is 19.44 gigahertz. Now we're going to save the project and label it as WR42. Click on the create new tab and select cuboid. We will set the width to 1.07 centimeters We'll set the depth to 0.43 centimeters, and we're going to set 10 centimeters as the height. We're then going to rename our cuboid as WR-42. We will now hollow out our waveguide using a shelling operation. Select Modify, Shell, select the model, for the open faces, we are going to hold control and select both faces on either end of the waveguide. We will specify a thickness of 0.1 centimeters. And now we need to create a dielectric insert. We are going to create new cuboid. As you can see, XF already saved the dimensions that we previously used. So we're just going to have to rename this shape as dielectric insert. In the workspace windows toolbar located on the right hand side of the XF user interface, choose the libraries window. Under filters, select materials. Under the built-in library, select pure metals. Scroll down to find copper, pure, and D. Click and drag the material onto the Materials branch under Definitions in the Project tree. If we expand the Materials tree and hover over the warning, XF is telling us that the evaluation frequency for surface conductivity correction is invalid. If we double click on the material to open up the Materials editor, you'll see that the evaluation frequency is set to a parameter. For now, we're just going to change this to 19.44 GHz. Now we're going to create a material called Teflon with predefined values. Right click on materials and choose new material definition. Double click on the material and change the name to Teflon. For the entry method we will choose loss tangent. The relative permittivity is 2.08. The loss tangent is 0.0004 and the evaluation frequency is 19.44 gigahertz. Under the appearance, we will choose cyan as the color of this material. We are now going to assign the materials by clicking and dragging the copper on top of the WR42 and clicking and dragging the Teflon on top of our dielectric insert. We will now define our grid by double clicking on the grid entry in the project tree. The grid is defined based on several rules of thumb. The grid must have at least 10 cells per wavelength at the upper frequency of operation, and this number must take into account the material properties. The waveguide should have a minimum of 3 to 5 cells in height in order to accurately calculate the fields inside the waveguide. In this case, Teflon's permittivity is 2.08, so the base cell size is 0 0.066 centimeters. Because the simulation is fully enclosed within the waveguide, padding is not necessary. 
Now that we've set up our grid, we have to actually compare our mesh to the geometry we created. So we're going to toggle on our mesh viewing controls and take a look at a slice in the XY plane. You can see that the geometry and the mesh don't quite line up. Right click on the WR42 and go down to gridding and meshing, gridding properties. We're going to turn on automatic fixed points, both edge corners and end points of axis aligned wires, and click done. Turning on automatic fixed points ensures that the edges of the grid will align with the edges of your CAD part. The grid of our FDTD space must be terminated with an outer boundary condition. Double click on the outer boundary. In our case, we're going to change all of our boundaries to PEC. Right click under waveforms and select new waveform definition. Double click on the resulting definition and we'll see that we have an automatic waveform. The automatic waveform takes into account the frequency range of interest that we set up when we began our project. In our case, it's a sinusoid at a single frequency. Next we will add a waveguide interface and we will evaluate the modes on our waveguide. The grid must be set up prior to this step so that XFDTD can properly evaluate the modes. Right click on waveguide interface and select new waveguide interface. For our problem, we're going to add two waveguide interfaces. The first one will transmit energy into the space, and the second one will receive energy from the space. Rename the waveguide as WR42 Excitation. From the pull-down menu, choose the automatic waveform for the excitation. Click on the Geometry tab to choose the size, location, and orientation of where this energy will enter our space. Enter 0.535 centimeters for both upper and lower U. Enter 0.215 centimeters for both lower and upper V. We also want to make sure that the propagation direction is in the positive Z direction so that we're injecting energy into our space. In the Boundaries tab, all boundaries should be set to PEC. In the Port Specification tab, we're going to add in two ports. The first one we're going to call TE10, and the second port we're going to call TE20. Enter the evaluation frequency of 19.44 GHz and press Compute Modes. This will start the Eigen Solver, which will solve for the fields at the evaluation frequency. In our case, since we have two different modes selected, it will show us the field distribution for each of these modes. Keep in mind that the Waveguide Solver is not restricted to only rectangular geometries. In our case, we solve for the two lowest order modes, which we knew were the TE10 and the TE20 mode. We will now create the new Waveguide Receiver port by right-clicking on Waveguide Interface, New Waveguide Interface. This one we will call WR-42 Receiver. We will make sure that this one is inactive by unchecking the checkbox next to Active. We will make sure that the propagation direction is negative and we're going to translate this to the opposite side of our waveguide geometry. It is important to note that the propagation direction must be in the negative Z direction and directed into our waveguide. If the direction of the waveguide port is flipped the opposite way, any energy striking the back side of our waveguide port will behave as if it is striking a PEC plate. The lower and upper U extensions will be 0.535 centimeters and the lower and upper V extensions will be 0.215 centimeters. In the port specification tab, add a waveguide port and call it TE20. Enter 19.44 gigahertz in the evaluation frequency box and click Compute Modes. We will now change the mode from the lowest order mode 0 to mode 1 to correspond to our TE20 mode that we're trying to receive energy on. We will now set up a solid part sensor to collect data in our geometry. First, 
Create a sensor definition by right-clicking on Sensor Definitions and select New Solid Sensor Definition. Name this definition Field Sampling and check Steady E and Steady H. Right-click on Near Field Sensors and select New Solid Part Sensor. Select the model Dielectric Insert and click on the Properties tab. Choose the field sampling definition that we previously created. The project is now set up and should be resaved. To create a new simulation, click on Simulations, Create Simulation. Click on the Setup as Parameters tab. Uncheck the box next to port 1 and check the box next to port 2. On the Frequencies of Interest tab, the simulation is already set up to collect steady state data at 19.44 GHz. On the Specified Termination criteria, we will leave Analyze Project Contents checked and select Create and Queue Simulation. When the simulation is complete, click on Results, click on Solid Sensor, click on Discrete Frequencies, and E-Field. Double click on the result at the bottom. Since we chose to save data on a solid part sensor, we can actually view the result on any plane of our geometry. In this case, we're going to look at the YZ plane, and we're going to look at the fourth slice in the X range. We will set the display mode to vector field and the decimation to finest, and we'll click apply to apply the update. Now we'll view from the negative X and turn off the geometry so we can see the vector field.